Hey guys, it's Cece, and today I am here with C.B. Lee. She's the author of Not Your Sidekick, as well as Seven Tears at High Tide. Yes. Is that the other one? I haven't read that one yet. So, um, yeah, just gonna ask some questions. Cool. First of all, do you want to explain Not Your Sidekick kind of in your own words? Explain what sure. it's about? Um, <clears throat> so Not Your Sidekick is the first in a series where a group of queer teens take down a corrupt government agency and there are robots and shenanigans and there's some romance and lots of adventure. <laughs> um, well, I mean, that's like the series nutshell, but not your sidekick. Uh, so each of the books is going to follow uh, one of the main characters and sidekick um, starts with Jess, who gets a job at um, Monroe Industries, which is a big tech company, but anyway, she's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna work with my crush, and um, it turns out that she ends up working for this town supervillain, and um, kinda goes from there. It's kind of like my aesthetic, that I like that like very like bright, fun, um, I don't know, I'm just tired of sad things. I mean, yeah. it's not that like, I, I mean, I appreciate that there are sad things, and I love that there are, you know, very moving stories and tragic stories, and there are dark and gritty stories, and those are great, but I, you know, I want more, like, there should be options of mm -hmm. having all the stories, and, like, every single type of story possible, mm -hmm. so having more fun, campy things. Yeah, I think, I think, like, positivity and brightness in stories is sometimes underrated. Aww. I feel like that should get a lot more love. Than yeah, that. yeah, I can see that, yeah, because I feel like a lot of things in order to be considered, I guess, like, literary, or, like, like, like when you think of like what movies make like the best movie picture of the year it's always right. something very tragic and sad happy stories can be literary too <laughs> definitely so is that some of where not your sidekick came from like where did the book kind of emerge from i i really just want to write a fun story and the original idea was like okay it'd be really funny if if um, there's a character whose parents are superheroes and she ends up working for the villain. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, would it be even better if it was super gay? Um, <laughs> that, that does up every story idea. <laughs> and then so, um, and then when I thought about Jess and kind of her background and, um, you know, it kind of a lot of her frustrations with like living up to her parents' expectations that came a lot from like, I guess like my experiences with my parents and growing up and kind of what I feel like a lot of young people do with, you know, because your parents expect a certain, you know, follow a certain career, go to a certain school, etc. And so we'll kind of see that explored in some of the other characters in, in the books to follow too. But really for Jess, a lot of her struggle was like, she's living in the shadow of her older sister. So it kind of the story really came from more of like, I just want to explore what would it be like for her to kind of see, um, like, how would you handle these expectations if she went and does something completely different? Well, um, Not Your Villain, which is the sequel to Not Your Sidekick, comes out October 5th. Yeah! Um, which is about Bells. Yes. Was it just natural that Bells was going to be next for the, yeah. the the next lead? Yes. So, well, actually, originally, um, the book was going to be one novel. And so my publisher was like, here's what, you know, we, this is what we would like to see in YA. These are, you know, like this type of length and storyline. And like, I was coming up close to the deadline and I was, I was writing it. And I was like, well, um, actually I think I'm going to need more than one book to finish this. And then, um, where I saw the story going, I was like, okay, so if I have, um, these four main characters, I want to do, um, one, one point of view book for each character. So not to spoil <laughs> not your right. side, we'll but like- We'll put a little warning for not your sidekick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just because as we, we don't know a lot about Bells' um, powers in, in sidekick. It's right. Kind of, it's kind of like the big reveal at the end. And so we kind of wonder like, well, what were you doing through this whole book? Not your villain. There will, it's, it's kind of, um, we kind of go back a little bit and okay. so we kind of look at what Bells has been doing through this book, and then we move forward. At the end of Not Your Sidekick, they figure out that there's a huge conspiracy with heroes and villains, and so um, Jess and her friends try to expose that, and so we kind of see the consequences of that play out in yeah. Not Your Villain. Do you have a favorite character of the main four, or is that like totally an unfair question? It is so unfair. They're all, <laughs> I love them all. I think as... I don't know, like, as I was writing Sidekick, I was like, oh, Jess, I love Jess, and mm -hmm. she's my favorite. And then as I was, I was writing Villain, I was like, oh, no, Bells, you're my favorite. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's hard, we'll, I don't know. We'll come back. Yeah, we'll come back, we'll come back. In, in a few years, and we'll see how you're <laughs> feeling about all of the men. Maybe. I think this was on Twitter once that you mm -hmm. mentioned that um, Sidekick, kind of, like, your elevator pitch for Sidekick included Dr. Horrible's sing-along Yes, yes, actually, yeah. I, I was like, oh, yeah, it's like Sky High meets Dr. Horrible. 
which is exactly how I explained it, because those are <laughs> two of my favorite superhero things. Um, so, do you have other favorite superhero stuff besides those that... <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I mean, I'm such a huge nerd about, like, comics and et cetera. I mean, I really love... Right now, I'm reading Miss um, Marvel, America Chavez. In terms of comics, um, I'm starting the Green Lantern series. I always loved, like, Young Avengers and... Mm-hmm. Um, they're bringing back Young Justice as a TV show. Right, I've heard excited. about that. Oh, Squirrel Girl. <laughs> Squirrel Girl. I just finally read the first volume oh of gosh. Squirrel Girl and loved it. It's so. so much fun. I was like, oh my god. She's the best. <laughs> so, do you have, like, besides superhero stuff, other fandom stuff that you're into? Some yeah, I mean, stuff? I love, I mean, I grew up with fandom. I mean, as I was, like, such a huge Harry Potter nerd growing up, and, you know, when I meet someone who wasn't a Harry Potter nerd, I'm like, what what did you do with your childhood? <laughs> um, but it's it's I don't know it's it just it was such a great frame of reference because I feel like there was so many amazing things happening while the books were coming out and then as like people were kind of I feel like there was a big boom for like fandom itself like and not just for Harry Potter but like all fandoms because there was like the internet and you could t- like talk to people for the first time where mm-hmm. like thousands of people screaming about the same thing. And, um, yeah, huge. I love Harry Potter. Oh, and then, like, Star Wars and Star Trek. Right. All the things. All the things. But a very, very fan of me with Harry Potter. Understandable. <laughs> First comment when she came into this room was that our curtains look very Griffin. <laughs> they are! They're Just as a frame of reference. <laughs> and then someone was like, oh, your, your, your book cover is very Slytherin. I was like, that's intentional. Because mm-hmm. Bells is a Slytherin. So, so. Oh, that's perfect. So the, the cover's green. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yes. This was done on purpose, cause, cause, and then I didn't think about it, um, because I was like, yeah, Jess is a Hufflepuff, and I'm like, oh, the cover's orangey, yellow, it's got those, like, warm vibes, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's gonna work for, so hopefully, as I talked to my cover artist, I was like, well, now we've got to continue this, so. That's perfect. <laughs> I love that. I hadn't even considered. <laughs> one of my friends, um, a blogger friend who lives in Australia, Not Your Psychic, mm-hmm. is one of her favorite books, Aww. so I specifically reached out and asked if she had something that she wanted to pass on. Okay. Um, and so she was wondering if there are any like specific songs that you associate with Sidekick, with Villain, with oh, the series. Oh gosh, I, I actually made like um, a playlist for Jess. Actually, okay. yeah, and it's on my Spotify somewhere, but I, d- I don't remember all the songs. There's some songs by Kina Granis, and mm-hmm. there's a song by like Arden Cho, and I was like, I'm gonna find like all Asian American like artists and mm-hmm. make a playlist of a song. But, but the Spotify yeah. playlist, yeah, it's still there. There's okay. a, there's a playlist called Not Your Sidekick on my Spotify. Seven Tears was your first mm-hmm. book, so what was kind of the process of getting that published and getting that to the place it is? Um, so Seven Tears actually was, I started it as a short story, um, because when Duet, um, so it's published with Duet Books, which is a small um, indie LGBTQ press, and they had an open call for submissions. So the, their submissions are open, like, right now, like, you can, anybody can submit a book at any time, but back in 2014, um, there were closed submissions, so there's only, like, sp- specific periods where you could submit a book. And then they had an open thing like, hey, like we're doing an anthology. We want to have, um, we want, if you have a story with a protagonist who is in the LGBTQ community, we would love for you to submit a short story, maximum 15,000 words. Yeah. And um, it has to revolve around the theme of summer love. So yeah. I was like, oh, that'd be cool. And at the time, I hadn't really thought about like writing or like writing. Like, I was like, oh, I love to write. Like, I write fanfic. I love like, and then I was thinking about like, oh, like if I, if I added up all the fix I've ever written, like, oh my gosh, that's like over, plenty over like a hundred thousand words, which is like, oh, like what's the size of a novel? And mm-hmm. um, so I was like, okay, I can do this. So I wrote Seven Tears at High Tide as a short story, submitted it, and then I waited a few months, and then I heard back, and they were like, we love your, we love your manuscript, we love to publish this in the anthology. And so then I met with the editors, and we went through the process of publishing it. And then one of my editors, she was like, "Hey, I have a question." I was like, "Yeah." Um, she was like, "Oh, like, if there was not a fifteen thousand word limit, where would you have liked to see the story go?" Because I had this whole like subplot about like there were there was this oh uh, whole other like B conflict, and then this big, whole big thing. But I I pared it down to kind of essentials for the basic story, which is like boy meets boy, boy finds the other boy's a selkie, and there's they, um, there's a magical wish clause that they could only be together for the one summer, but then um, 
but then they have to figure out how to stay together. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's all these other things that like kind of came into play and like some family stuff. But I was like, okay, I can't, I can't make it fit to 15. So I cut a bunch of stuff out. And then, so when the editor was like, so what, what would have happened? I was like, oh, I have all these things. And they're like, oh, cool. Actually, <laughs> would you be interested in developing this into a novel? I'm like, yes. I would. So Summer Love, which is which is an anthology, which has been published by Duet Books. So I was originally going to be in that, but then um, but then Seven Tears got pulled out, and we worked to develop it into a novel. And the editors were amazing, and I was able to have all my storylines, and mm-hmm. it was it's a full novel. And I was like, that was my first book, and that was really fun for me as a writer because I didn't, you know, I didn't think it was possible, I right. guess, to like write a book until I'd done it, and then um, it was like hard and it was parts of it were terrible but then once it was done I was like oh I can do this like when, once you've climbed that mountain you're like hey like this is possible I can I can do this again mm-hmm. um, even though I like cry the entire time <laughs> <laughs> so again I know this is kind of putting you on the spot but um besides your own okay. are there oh are there any like 2017 releases that have just been released or that are coming up that you're really looking forward to reading um so storm season came out earlier this year right um if you're looking for a fun girls falling in love and trapped in cabin tropes. Um, I'm also really excited for um, Julie Dell's uh, right. Forest of a Thousand Lanterns. It's so important to see, like, when you have, like, when you're talking about representation, you, you should be able to have, like, multiple characters be certain things. So, like, if, if you, the only time you see, let's say, like, a character of color and they're the villain, then mm-hmm. that's not um, good representation. But, like, there should be an opportunity for like, because if there's only one character in that one book, right. then then that person has the pressure of having to be everything. So it's very difficult. Like if you have a TV show or a book where you have like, you know, one character color, or if you have one gay character, then they become like the gay character, and then they have to like uphold. You know, it's it's hard for that. You know, the writers or that one character. If that one character is flawed, then people are like, hey, like this person's mean. We don't like them. Or like, but they should we should have the opportunity to have, like, mean gay characters. Right. Or, like, you know, there are nice gay characters, but there should be enough characters. When there are enough characters, right. then you can you can fully explore... Um, you don't have to worry about, like, hey, there's only one character and that's a really mean person. But, like, if you have... The more characters there are, the more representation it is, the better um, able we're able to explore, like, all sorts of different types of characters and for mm-hmm. people to, like, see themselves in different types of characters and... That's why, you know, it's one of the reasons why, aside from being a great book. I haven't actually had a lot of time to read a lot, but I actually devoured, it's not fiction, um, it's a memoir by um, T. Bui, mm-hmm. and it's called um, The Best We Can Do, and it's a graphic novel memoir, and she's oh, okay. she's Vietnamese, American, and she immigrated here, and it was, it was really, I, I like cried a lot while reading it, I was mm-hmm. like, it's really good, and it just, um, it came out this year, and it's just this beautiful, telling of um of her experience growing up and also her parents experiences um living in vietnam living through the vietnam war and then the you know and it's but it's also a lot about like parents and their children and the relationship with parents and children and mm-hmm. kind of like the expectations of and i really really loved it it's so well done um and when i had the opportunity to see her um at BookCon, mm-hmm. and she was on a panel with um, some other amazing comic artists, and I was like, wow, like, everything you're saying is really resonating to me, because um, just when talking about, like, wanting to um, draw characters, like, she was like, um, she drew the characters because she didn't see uh, how, like, Vietnamese people were portrayed in media, because there were a lot of stereotypes and mm-hmm. the way other people see them, and so for her to draw her own family and be like, hey, like these are people that, um, and hear how they are living in their here's their family lives. And right. I I was born here, but my parents um, immigrated here from Vietnam right. in the seventies. So like a lot of a lot of um, there are a lot of similar like veins in the story. When I was like, oh my gosh, like that that city was where my parents are from, and like mm-hmm. this is the exact same thing they would say to me in this situation. So that was um, that was a great read. I highly recommend. Yeah. Um, the best we can do. So, um, Abby and Jess, mm-hmm. I was recently talking about the fact that they're one of my favorite oh, like female you. female couples. I just mm-hmm. think that they're so well written oh, as you. as a couple. Mm-hmm. I was curious what some of your favorite female female couples are. Have you ever seen Person of Interest? I have. I've seen bits and pieces of it. Okay, so there's. there's but I know a lot about the yeah. There's, there's like a relationship in there which I love, 
And um, I guess I can just do like a quick rack of books I've read recently. Yeah, which is yeah, like, absolutely. Um, like Storm Season by Anne <laughs> Hansen, um, <laughs> which is so it's beautiful. It's like um, it's like there's a young um, fashion music blogger, and she and her friends go camping, and she's not like outdoorsy at all. Mm-hmm. She rolls down a hill, sprains her ankle, and this like hot like ranger who's this like she's kind of like this brooding, mysterious ranger person like rescues her and there's like a storm and so the, all the roads are like you know there's no the power it's, it's one of the things i read recently that i really love there is there was a show called carmilla that i was very into yes whenever people are like hey would you like to watch a show about vampire lesbians like yes yes 100 percent as many as possible <laughs> recommended to a lot of people she said the funny thing when you say that to me i was like oh like i first i think of like ships then i'm like okay that's that's a different question then i mean if you want to go for ships that's well, totally fine yeah but it's hard with like because that's what i immediately think about because they're not there, there aren't any that you can immediately well it, it's because it's not like a canon mm-hmm. like a you know I'm going to do finger quotes here, but I feel like because we're so thirsty for a representation, we're going to see ourselves in in right. characters that already exist, and we're like, well, I ship this character and this character, which is great. Um, mm-hmm. There also should be... But more, gonna... more canon. Yeah, or more just, just when I was a kid, and I was, I really loved like, science fiction and fantasy, and I grew up reading all these adventure stories, and I was like, okay, like if you are going to like save the day and... Um, you know, live, have all these adventures and live happily ever after, you're pretty much going to be, like, a straight white boy mm-hmm. or, or, like, a straight white girl. And there's all, you know, in their romances, they're, they're, it would be, like, very heterosexual. And, and so I kind of believed or, like, internalized, I internalized that, like, oh, like, people who look like me don't get happy endings. Like, people who look like me don't get, like, cool adventures. And actually, it's a weird thing with, like, when I started writing, mm-hmm. at the time I would write these characters and all the characters would be white or mm-hmm. straight. And, and I could not write myself. And, I could, and it, was, it was big internalized, like, the main character has to be this way for, for, in order for people to relate to. But right. that's not true. I mean, we, we all are expected to relate to, like, straight white people in, in, mm-hmm. in novels. But, like, I feel like every character doesn't matter their race or sexuality. Um, you know, because they're, they're human and they go through, you know, it's, it's, if there's a story and they go through it, they have a journey, then they, they're relatable in that way because they're right. human and have emotions. That, that should be the baseline. They're human, they have emotions. Or even if they're like aliens, they have emotions. <laughs> I'm sure. If you can, are there any other projects you're currently working on that you can talk about or that you want to touch on at all? Um, I can't talk about my other projects, although I do have them. Mm-hmm. They exist. Um, but in the side case series, there's, there are four books. So I'm working on, I'm right now I'm working on the edits for Not Your Villain, so I'm, that's happening. And then I'm working on the next in the series. I don't think I'm allowed to say the title, but yeah. it's, it's when Not Your Villain comes out, there will be a thing in the back. But like, hey, like this is what's happening in book three. Okay. And there will be the title of it. And, and, and then there's some short stories in the Sidekick universe. So Sidekick series and their short stories. Those are my current projects, main projects. Okay. Um, I didn't know the series was called Sidekick Squad. It's a new thing. <laughs> it's a new thing. Okay, because I got on Goodreads today, and I was like, I don't remember this being the title. Um, we didn't decide that until this year. It's it's Emma's name for them, mm-hmm. but it's it's there's there will be there will be reasoning for it. Okay. <laughs> but, no, I like it a lot. I, I mean, even it. even without the reasoning, it, it, it's, it's still it's a, a great fun title. name. Thank you. Okay. Well. Is there anything else you want to mention? Oh, um, I'm on the internet. I, I do things on the internet. I, um, I have a Twitter. I'm at author underscore CB Lee. Mm-hmm. And then on Instagram, I'm CB Lee underscore CB Lee. My website is CB-Lee.com. And then there are like, links to all the things. And okay. Thank you for having me. This yes. is so much fun. Yes. I'm so Thank glad for... that we were able to make this work. Yeah, I know. We just got like the beginnings of talking the other day. We've like expanded. Oh, no, it's fine. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. Be sure to grab a copy of Not Your Sidekick. Look out for Not Your Villain. It's still, it's still like overwhelming to me that, like, oh my gosh, like a person read my book and they liked it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, oh. A lot of us do. Oh, We're all very excited about it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I hope that you guys enjoyed watching and hearing more about the book and everything. And uh, I'll see you in another video very soon. Yay, thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>